No disrespect to anything else, but as a piece of writing, this was absolutely kind of remarkable. Hi, I'm Alistair McDowell. I'm a writer and I'm here to talk about some books I think are worth talking about. I think it'd be a stupid thing to try and argue, but I think if I had to, I could maybe argue that August Wilson was the best playwright ever, maybe, I think. It's Gem of the Ocean, which is the 1900s one, which I, I feel like people don't talk about as much and is really great. Joe Turner's Come and Gone, I think, might be the best. It's just got so much mystery and pain and kind of beauty in it. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which you don't have, which they made a, a good film of recently. The Piano Lesson, which is another really great one. Then we got Seven Guitars. Fences, which is sort of more known. Two Trains Running, Jitney, King Headley II, and Radio Golf. And I just think, I mean, it's weird, like, in America, he just is acknowledged part of the canon, like great, great, great playwright. And I feel like it's only recently over here, over here that I hear people talking about him. And I just remember discovering his stuff at university when I was just sort of pulling things randomly off the shelves and it, it just blew my mind. Uh, what should we talk about next? Boy by Leo Butler. I just, I think about this play all the time and I think it's one of the most like upsetting plays I think I've ever seen. I think it's, it's so painful and sad and there's so much empathy in it and heart and love and it's quite a difficult one to read because it's all there's lots and lots of simultaneous dialogue set down the page i feel like people should talk about it more because i think it's um i think it's a bit of a overlooked kind of modern classic i'd say as far as i'm concerned i think what should we do next we'll talk about all right marvin's room by Scott McPherson. Scott McPherson like died of AIDS not long after it premiered, as did his partner. And it's not it's not a hugely like flashy play. It's kind of a couple of scenes, you know, mostly domestic, family kind of. But I just find it so. It just makes me cry every single time I read it. And I must have read it, you know, 20, 30 times because I just think it's just got the most beautiful character work in it. And I just can't believe that he was able to to transform his pain into something, into something else that was, you know, I just think it's, I, I, I'm kind of being particularly inarticulate about it because I feel like it's just about feelings. I just, it's just a, I just, I just think it's a beautiful play. What else should we talk about? Well, we'll give my mates a shout out, I guess. So Alice Birch and Rory Malarkey. I feel lucky that I have two writer friends who I feel uh, repeatedly envious of in the sort of good way of feeling envious of someone. I mean, you don't have Anatomy of a Suicide here, which was on here, which I think is kind of on its way to being acknowledged as a, a classic. Um, Rory uh, Cannibals, I think, which is, I mean, this is a pretty good collection. You get, this is pretty good value for money in this. You get Cannibals, which is astonishing play. Wolf from the Door, which is fantastic. And Each Slow Dusk, which is kind of one of my favourites of his, which is a, it was done with Pentabus, they toured it round, and it's about the First World War. And it's so formally peculiar. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'd be um, the writer I am without these two, kind of, um, you know, showing me the way every now and then. Um, uh, what else should we talk about? How long we got? We got a bit longer. I'm not doing the plots, which is, but then, you know, you can read the back of a book. Um, all right, let's, I mean this, so let's talk about The Welkin. This was a pretty big play when it was, it was on at the National 2020. People kind of agreed this was good, but it, I just don't think it, it, it got the props it deserved, because I think this is properly one of the like great, great plays of the last like 10 to 15 years, I think. I thought it was the best play of that year. I thought, and I thought it just as soon as I was sat watching it, I was like, this is proper. This is a sort of instantly into the sort of classics list. I was kind of gripped by it and it's really funny and it's just full of such amazing language and um, 
imagery and and it also you feel like there's so many other stories that kind of spring out of this play like that you could e e easily could have written another 50 plays out of this one you know which is always a really good sign i think as a piece of writing this was absolutely kind of remarkable i thought um it says as he tosses it away like that um uh, so this is uh, so I didn't I couldn't see uh, any in your shop, but uh, Maria Irene Fornes. So I drew I drew the cover of my copy of it. I think it might be out of print this collection, or if it's not, it's sort of it's slightly harder to get hold of. So she's again doesn't get mentioned so much over here. She's a Cuban American writer who wrote who died not too long ago. Wrote a bunch of really strange plays and a musical and. Um, her partner for a long time was Susan Sontag, so she was sort of involved in that whole kind of New York world, of, you know. And um, she, um, I feel again in America is sort of right, because she's taught so many, she was a big teacher, she taught a lot of playwrights, you know. But her work over here is sort of less known, I think partly because it's just, it's so strange. I find it really hard to describe it, but I think it's, it's something to do with almost every play she wrote is like is, is, is completely different from the last one and not just like oh she's written about something different it's like the form is different the use of language is different the use of characters everything is different and so you can read all of her plays and they're almost like a little school in not repeating yourself and growing and, and you know and, and ambition as a writer um, uh, Promenades is a, is a musical she wrote, which is really strange, really funny, and yeah, I think you can listen to it online. I think someone's put it up on YouTube or something, you know. And Muds is a really peculiar play, um, but yeah, I just think if if you're um, if you're serious about playwriting, she's sort of one of the folks you should look into. She's also one of I think one of the sort of few um, known influences on Carol Churchill as well. She's someone that Carol Churchill has mentioned um, a couple of times. Uh, let's talk about, so Eurydice by Sarah Rule is a kind of retelling of the Orpheus myth and everything, but um, it's such a brilliant kind of crash course in kind of what theatre can do in terms of like imagery. Uh, so I've got to talk about um, Robert Holman, who we lost recently, um, which is very sad. He's one of the biggest influences on me and he was also someone I was very fond of as a person. Um, so I discovered Robert Holman uh, the same way I discovered Wallace Shawn, which was Duncan Macmillan came and talked to our um, class at university and he just started describing this play about um, a flood that floods the whole world and then suddenly people are on a raft made out of a living room. And he was describing rafts and dreams and it completely blew my mind. Like I couldn't understand how a play could be like that. You know, I was still quite conventional in my thinking about what theatre was, I think. So I went out and got hold of that and then read as many as I could find and kind of get hold of. And, um, and they just absolutely knocked me out for a bunch of reasons. One was the kind of magical realism that he was sort of playing around with, which was felt so um, just beautifully realised. I think his work led me back to where I grew up, I think, and sort of to see it for what it was, as, just as magical and as peculiar as anywhere else, you know. This is a really great book in that it's got, so two of his plays that are really super special, uh, Today and Other Worlds, uh, Other Worlds which is set in Hartlepool. Um, and Today, which is for strange for him, has like a battle scene in it, which is quite unusual for him. His plays are usually quite quiet, you know. Um, but he's just, just one of the all-time great writers and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll miss him, yeah.